The legendary Zephyr name was revived in 2004 in the form of a concept vehicle at the New York Auto Show and showed the market a new entry-level luxury car. And in 2005, for the 2006 model year, Lincoln officially revived the Zephyr name from the 1930s, as well as a 70s and 80s Fox platform car. While the CD3 platform would live until 2011 when the 2000 12 CD4 based cars came along, the Zephyr would only last one year as in 2007, Lincoln would transition to the much more confusing MK monikers. And in this video, we take a look at the pretty run-of-the-mill 2008 Lincoln MKZ. As you can see from the pricing on the left, it fell right in line with popular European offerings of similar class sizes. This MKZ is painted in dune pearl coat metallic with a sand leather interior and is highlighted with satin nickel trim and light figured maple wood. While all-wheel drive was an $1,850 option, this car is front-wheel drive and is powered by the 3.5 liter Duratec 35 series dual overhead cam 24 valve V6 engine. It is part of the Cyclone engine family and is of aluminum block and head construction with intake variable cam timing and a 10.3 to 1 compression ratio. It creates 263 horsepower at 6,250 RPM, 249 pound feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. Car and Driver Magazine road tested an MKZ in January of 2007 and reported 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.3 seconds with 0 to 100 miles per hour reach in 18.3 seconds. Quarter mile was in 15.6 seconds at 91 miles per hour with a top speed electronically limited to 127 miles per hour. All MKZs feature a 17.5 US gallon fuel capacity and consumes 4.5 gallons per 100 miles driven with an estimated total driving range of 385 miles. EPA fuel economy figures for this car are 18 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway, 22 miles per gallon combined. And the sole available transmission for the MKZ, both front and all-wheel drive versions, is a 6-speed Eisen TF80 automatic. Around the rear, the MKZ looks substantially different from the Ford Fusion and Mercury Milan stable mates with wing-shaped LED tail lamps that flowed into the trunk lid. The trunk featured a small depression down the center line that flowed from the top to the liftover which framed the Lincoln Star logo, a nice subtle styling touch if you ask me. As previously stated, tail lamps and brake lamps are LED with turn indicators and reverse lamps remaining incandescent. Mounted in the bumper fascia are the ultrasonic reverse sensors. Down below, our car features dual exhaust, and along the profile, the MKZ looks somewhat familiar to the other CD3 platform cars with no true distinguishing features, which made the car a hard sell. The MKZ sits on a 107.4 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 190.5 inches. Steering on the MKZ is hydraulically assisted variable rate vehicle speed sensitive rack and pinion with a somewhat overboosted quality to it. Steering features 2.5 turns lock to lock with a 40 foot turning radius. Wheels on this car are the $395 optional 17 inch 8 spoke polished chrome wheels with P25 50R17 tires. Brakes are four wheel disc brakes assisted by ABS, electronic brake force distribution, and stability control. They can halt the MKZ from 70 miles per hour to zero and 182 feet.
Around the front of the MKZ, the look is definitely Lincoln, with a large clear lens headlamps and large waterfall grille. The same centerline channel depression that is on the trunk lid appears down the length of the hood, flowing into the grille centerline, yet, yet again framing the Lincoln Star logo. Headlamps on the car are halogen projector beam units and chrome bezels with clear lenses that integrate turn indicators and side markers. The grille is satin nickel plated with chrome highlights and represents a more modern, youthful take on the classic waterfall style grille. Down below in the lower intake reside halogen projector beam fog lamps. Alright, we have keyless entry via the key fob or the keypad. And inside, we have a very nice interior. It does feature Lincoln's then popular dual cal instrument panel design. Pretty nice and high quality interior materials. We do have soft touch vinyl, satin nickel accents. We've also got the light figured ebony and chrome door handles. Of course, this vehicle is equipped with power heated mirrors, power windows, and power door locks. On the door sills, we do have satin uh, stainless steel embossed Lincoln tread plates, 8-way power driver and passenger seat with adjustable lumbar support. On the instrument panel, we have the automatic headlamp control with fog lamp control and trunk release. We've also got a leather and wood wrapped tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Alright, looking at the seats, even though they are lifted basically out of the Milan and the Fusion, they do have their own Lincoln touch with the perforated leather inserts. Overall, the seats are very comfortable. They're very nice and supportive. They do feature side impact airbags. Alright, let's pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see here, nice fluid over boosted, easy to use power assist steering. The steering wheel does have satin nickel accents. You have cruise controls on the left hand side and on the right hand side are your audio controls as well as your Bluetooth phone controls. Looking straight ahead, very easy to read, large instrumentation with a tachometer and speedometer. You've also got a dot matrix, trip computer, and odometer display down below. And my camera keeps overcompensating for blue light for some reason, I'm not really sure why. And looking down the center stack, we do have circular air vents unique to the Lincoln. Also in the middle, the traditional Lincoln analog clock. Down below, we have our controls for a 6 to CD changer. This vehicle has the Dolby ProLogic SC901 surround sound system. However, you can opt for the $995 THX2 certified audio system. Moving down, trip computer controls in this bank of switches, traction control, four-way flashers, and your passenger airbag off indicator. And moving down, we do have dual zone automatic climate control. Dual zone in temperature, but single zone in panel distribution and fan speed. Moving down, you have your fan speed selector here. Moving the lever out of the way, we can see we have our controls for our ventilated seats here, as well as our heated seats. You cannot have both on, however. Alright, and moving down, we have a ashtray with a cigar lighter, our sink badge for our Bluetooth connectivity, chrome ring illuminated cup holders in the center console, a vinyl padded stitched armrest that slides out. It also opens up to reveal storage as well as a USB port and an auxil auxiliary cable in input. Overall, the interior of the MKZ is actually a very nice place to be. It's very comfortable, it's very quiet, and it's very well built at least in my opinion. Overhead, you do have an automatic dimming rear view mirror, three channel home link universal garage door opener on the driver's side sun visor, 
two overhead map light and reading lights. You've also got sunglasses holder and your power sunroof control. Sun visors fold down and open up to reveal illuminated vanity mirrors. Of course they swing out and they slide out on extension rails. And finally we do have dampened overhead assist handles. Alright, let's take a look at the rear seat. The rear seat passengers fe uh, feature the same interior treatment as the front seats. The same two-tone vinyl touch, soft touch trim and light figured ebony, satin nickel, and chrome accents are in the rear doors for a nice cohesive look. Again with the blue light overcompensation. Anyway, our rear seats do seat 3 across. They are a 60-40 split folding seat, perforated seat inserts, as well as outboard head restraints. You do have a fold down center armrest with dual cup holders. Overhead, you do have overhead dome light and outboard seat reading lights. A feature I wish my 2009 Ford Fusion had, even though it does have a sunroof as well. Of course you also have overhead assist handles, seat back map pockets, and an absence of rear climate vents. And the rear seats do fold, however annoyingly there is no interior release. You have to go to the trunk and pull the seat release levers in the trunk. As you can see it fell. And that's how you fold the seats. I still do not know why manufacturers do not put interior release handles in some of their vehicles. Alright, there are several ways to open the trunk lid. You can press the dashboard mounted button. You can also press it or double press the key fob button. 
You can also do it old school with the uh, key and the key lock. But anyway, the trunk opens really nicely. It's on dampened uh, hinges with non-impeding hinges into the trunk area. The trunk area is illuminated. It is fully carpeted and fully lined. It is a very nice and spacious 15.3 cubic feet. You also have a low lift over height. Underneath the mat, you do have your compact spare tire, complete with jack and tools. Alright, and this does conclude our in-depth walk-around look at the 2008 Lincoln MKZ. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhoodcarreviews, as well as Instagram at brinsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.